It's Mrs. Harbin. And I talked to you about the gas laws. And this time we're going to make quantitative descriptions of gas laws. So here are the objectives we're going to look at. So make sure you refer back to these when it's time to know if you learned it. Okay, we're going to look at quantitative gas laws, Charles Law, Boyle's Law, Galois X Law, combined gas law, calculations, four variables, direct proportions and inverse proportions, vapor pressure, and explain some real life phenomena. Do, 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 do. So four variables that are used to describe gas vapor. Pressure is one of those four variables, and pressure is gases hitting things. Okay, like the walls of a container. Number of particles is number of gas particles. Volume is how much space gas takes up. And temperature is the um, average kinetic energy of the molecules. Okay, so how fast they're moving, their average kinetic energy. Here's some gas particles in a box. The box doesn't change size, so its volume's constant. Gas particles are moving, that's the number of particles. They're hitting the walls, that's the gas pressure. So they have volume, particles, pressure, and then temperature. If you increase the temperature, you make them move faster. Okay. So, picture it. Boyle's Law. Boyle's Law has to do with um, pressure and volume. So I want you to picture it by thinking of those birthday parties where um, when you're at the birthday party, you're supposed to pop the balloons in the balloon popping contest. So here's you trying to pop the balloon. Hated that game because it made so much noise. And so you push in on the balloon. So you decrease the amount of space it takes up. What happens to the pressure? The pressure goes up. So volume goes down, pressure goes up, and then pop, the balloon pops. So let's describe what happens in Boyle's Law. Well, in Boyle's Law, as the pressure increases, higher pressure, more pressure, the volume goes down. Okay. Likewise, if the volume goes up, then the pressure will go down because the gas particles will be spread out more. So then in this one, temperature is constant and number of particles is constant. Okay, so let's write Boyle's Law. P1V1 equals P2V2. Okay, so temperature is constant, number of particles is constant. This kind of shows you too. Look, increase the pressure, decrease the volume. Okay, so let's do a problem with it. 33 milliliters. Milliliters is volume. 700 millimeters of mercury. Millimeters of mercury is a pressure. If you increase the pressure to, sorry, pressure, to 2100 millimeters of mercury, what would the volume be? Okay, so here's our variables. We start plugging them in. Our first pressure was 700 millimeters of mercury. And our first volume was 33 milliliters. Okay, make sure your units match your uh, variables. Our second pressure was 2100 millimeters of mercury. And our second volume is what we're looking for. So we gotta get rid of the 2100 millimeters of mercury. And divided on both sides, 2100 millimeters of mercury. Look what happens to the units. Those cancel. This cancels millimeters of mercury, and you're left with milliliters, which is good because we were looking for a volume, and volume is in milliliters. So then it's 700. Hey, it's time for the calculator. It's time for the calculator. So we got 700 times 33 divided by 2100. Enter 11 milliliters. Now we can see if this makes sense. V2 equals 11 milliliters. But what happened to pressure? Pressure goes from 700 to 2100. So pressure goes up. What should happen to volume? Volume should go down. 33 down to 11. Check. We win. All right. Another gas law. Charles law. Charles law has to do with temperature and volume. So picture yourself on a after that birthday party where you just won the balloon popping contest. You got to keep a balloon. Yay! I'm so happy I have a balloon. And then you go outside on a cold day. It's December, and you walk outside with your balloon and Oh, your balloon shrinks, and you say, oh, I'm so sad. Why did that happen? Well, it's Charles Law. Don't worry, it's just chemistry. All you need to do is go back into your warm house, and your balloon will go back to normal size. Woo, yay, normal size. Okay, maybe it's a little bigger. It's warmer in your house than it was at the party.
Okay, so let's describe it. Charles' law is when temperature goes up, back into the warm house, the volume goes up. Or, and when temperature goes down outside, volume goes down. So their balloon got smaller. So let's write that in mathematical. The volume over the temperature is constant, and the volume over uh, V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. That's Charles' law. Hey, what's this guy doing here? That is Lord Kelvin. And Lord Kelvin says, Always, always change your gas law problem temperatures to Kelvin. Okay, because that's the absolute temperature scale. So let's do a problem. Balloon initially, a man heats a balloon in an oven. That makes sense. The balloon initially has four... 0.4 liters, so that's a volume one, and a temperature of 20 degrees Celsius. If the What will the volume be? Volume two, we don't know, at a temperature of 250 degrees Celsius. So we have to change our temperatures. Our T1 is 20 degrees Celsius, but it must be Kelvin. So we had 273, and we get 293 Kelvin. So our T1 set. Our T2 has to be Kelvin, so we take 250 degrees Celsius and add 273. Okay, I could get a calculator, but I know 250 to 250 is 500, and the 500 plus 23 is 523 Kelvin. So now we can plug and check. So our first volume was 0.4 liters. Our first temperature was 293 Kelvin. Our second volume is what we're looking for, and our second temperature was 523 Kelvin. So how do we solve for this? We multiply by 523 Kelvin on both sides to get rid of that. And then on this side, look what happens if Kelvin cancels Kelvin, and we're left with liters, which is good because we were looking for volume. So then you just plug it in your calculator, 523 times 0.4 divided by 293, and you get 523. Oh, you get a calculator. It's not working. Really? Are you kidding me? Okay. Let's turn it on. I have 523 times 0.4 divided by... 293. Enter. I get 0.71 liters. Let's check if that makes sense. What happened to temperature? Temperature went way up. So what should happen to volume? Volume should go up. It went point four, from 0.4 to 0.7. Woohoo! Alright. less X law is another law that we can do. Um, and when we think about less X law, we have to have a c container that doesn't change. So we can't change the shape of the container. But what happens to the molecules in the container? Well, if you take those same molecules and you heat them up, they're going to cause more pressure because there's going to be more collisions because it's hotter. So picture it, solid container, hot, okay, hotter equals more pressure. More pressure. Why? Because the molecules are moving faster. So here's what happens. If temperature goes up, the pressure should go up. That's how we're going to describe gay less X law. But what if the temperature goes down? Well, the pressure should go down. Molecules move slower. So, uh, why is Lord Kelvin here again? Lord Kelvin is here to say, change temperature to Kelvin. Okay, well, we will. So, here's the formula. P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2. And now let's solve the problem. Um, we have a gas, a gas in an aerosol can, uh, pressure 1, at temperature 1. And what do we do with that? No, we don't throw it into a fire. But if we did, what is the initial pressure? So we want, I'm sorry, internal pressure at temperature 2. Well, change to Kelvin. So T1 is going to be 27 degrees Celsius plus 273 for 300 Kelvin. T2 is going to be 927 degrees Celsius. Oh, that's hot. Plus 273 equals 1200 Kelvin. So now we can plug and check. So we plug in P1, 1 ATM, divided by um, the initial temperature, T1, is 300 Kelvin. And that has to be equal to our second pressure. We don't know that yet. And 1200 Kelvin. So multiply by 1200. Bye bye, Kelvin, on that side. 1200 on this side, and bye bye K, and then we're left with ATM, which is good because we want pressure. And then 1200 divided by 300 is 4. So let's see if that makes sense. Well, pressure went up, 
because temperature went up. Woohoo! All right. What's held constant here? Particles and volume. So constant volume and number of particles constant for gala sex law. All right. Oh, look at some graphs. What do these graphs describe? Well, they describe the gas law. So let's figure out what this one is. We have volume, we have temperature, volume and temperature, volume and temperature, Charles law. So Charles law is T, oh, I'm sorry, Charles law is not. It is V over T equals V over T. And so look at this is the Kelvin scale. But what happens is you see this line like this. This line represents what we call the variables are directly proportional. And that's what the graph looks like for a direct proportional. Okay, so Charles Law describes it, is described um, the variables are directly proportional to each other, as you can see by the graph. Look, it's the same kind of graph, but now it's pressure and temperature. Whose law is that? Let's give us X law. And we have pressure is directly proportional to temperature. Okay, and it's a directly proportional again, because look at how the graph looks. As one goes up, the other goes up. All right, so that leaves one more law. This is Boyle's law. But this has a different relationship. How do we know it's Boyle's law? Volume and pressure. Boyle's law, Boyle's law is volume and pressure. And it looks like as volume goes up to 12, the pressure's at 1, pressure's down. As volume goes down to 2, pressure's up to, well, we can't see it. But as volume goes down to 6, pressure goes up to to two okay so that means pressure and volume are what we call inversely proportional inversely proportional and we say it as one goes up the other one goes down but you can see on the graph what the graph looks like okay this one is one goes up the other one goes up okay Direct proportion, inverse. Direct, inverse. Okay. Oh, look. We combine the gas laws together. And you see all of the variables. The only thing is that number of particles held constant. Particles constant. So this is called a combined gas law because it has all the variables holding the number of particles constant. And um, you can see pressure, temperature, and volume. So you might be saying, well, now we got to know four gas laws. But you really don't because if you cross out the T here... Because temperature is held constant, you have Boyle's law. But what if you hold volume constant? If we hold volume constant, then you have gay less x law. But what if you hold pressure constant? Then you have TV. Charles is in charge of TV. That's how I remember Charles in charge. So I'll show Scott Bayo. Look it up. So we can do a problem with this combined gas law. Okay, so here we have temperature 1, sample of gas at 15 degrees. Uh, atmosphere says so a pressure 1 has a volume of two milliliters what about or what volume so we're looking for v2 will the gas occupy at 38 degrees? so that's a temperature two and a pressure okay so let's solve this one but what do we have to do to kelvin change to kelvin thank you lord kelvin so we take t1 t1 equals 15 degrees celsius plus 273 kelvin or a 288 Kelvin. Okay, temperature 2 is 38 degrees Celsius plus 273 Kelvin equals, um, let's see, 30 is the, 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 I would say 311 Kelvin. So now we can plug in chug. So for P1, we plug in two atmospheres. For V1, we plug in two milliliters. And for T1, we plug in 288 Kelvin. First part is keeping them straight, so make sure you label them. On the other side, we have P2 is one atmosphere. Volume 2 is what we're looking for. And we have 311 Kelvin. So what we have to do is multiply by 311 over 1. That's Kelvin ATM. So this whole thing cancels that whole thing. But then we have to do 311 Kelvin over 1 atm on this side. Look what happens. Kelvin cancels Kelvin. Bye-bye. Atmosphere cancels atmosphere. We're left with milliliters. Is that good or bad? That's good because we're looking for a volume. So now we plug and chug. 
All right, so we have 311 times 2 times 2 divided by 288 gives us 4.32 milliliters. Check my math on that one. Let's see. Um, 311 times 2 times 2 divided by 288 gives us 4.32 milliliters. And that's what we were looking for was a volume. So you can combine the gas glass. Uh, vapor pressure, what does that mean? Glad you asked. Well, if you take a glass of water and put it out in the air, the water will evaporate. So liquid turns into gas. Well, what do we call the pressure that the gas exerts that used to be a liquid? It's called vapor pressure. The evaporated molecules cause vapor pressure. Vapor pressure is caused by uh, liquid particles that have turned to gas. So they're not liquid anymore. That have turned to gas. And what do they do? They hit the surface of the liquid. What do I mean? Well, check it out. Here's your liquid. Here's your evaporated particles that used to be liquid, used to be liquid, and now they're hitting the surface of the liquid, causing pressure, under pressure. Vapor pressure comes from the evaporated molecules that hit the surface of the liquid. That's what vapor pressure is. Why are we talking about it? Well, right now, there's not that much vapor pressure because there's not as much moisture in the air from the H2O. Um, and if someone lets open a bottle of perfume, oh, look, it's a bottle of perfume spray. That used to be liquid, so now that gas causes pressure. Okay, Let's solve some chemistry mysteries. Solve the mystery. Think of the marshmallow in the vacuum. So what is the big deal with this high-altitude baking? All right, high altitude baking, you have to put in a fourth a cup of flour into your mixture as opposed to just baking it not at high altitude. Let's think about how if we put these marshmallows in the microwave, their faces might turn a little bit scared, like, oh, don't put me in the microwave. Why? What would happen to the marshmallow? Um, well, the microwave is heating up, but if you put... Uh, the marshmallow would expand. And what will make the marshmallow expand? Well, I want you to consider that as you think about why, oh no, we would have to put a fourth a cup of flour extra at a high altitude. This might help. Oh, thanks, Mr. Stop it for this wonderful picture. Look at all these, not all these, look at all these gas particles that are present causing gas pressure at one atmosphere pressure and how at less atmospheres pressure there are not as many gas particles causing pressure what does that mean about our cakes tune in for chemistry to learn more um, also you can see demos of gas behavior at this website please check it out so to review memorize the combined gas law p1 t1 sorry p1 v1 over t1 equals p2 v2 over t2 Memorize the combined gas law and realize you can get any gas law from that as, you, as long as you remember which one it is. Okay, so if I cover up T, I have Boyle's Law. Temperature's constant. And you can cover up any one variable on both sides and get somebody's gas law. Sort out your information to decide what to do. Find out what's missing on, in the gas law and solve for it. And make sure your units match and work out. Uh, what's vapor pressure? It comes from evaporated liquid that is turned into gas and is now hitting the surface of the liquid. And remember, gases are all around you. Gas laws uh, govern those gases, so go bake a cake.